guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you, my name is Christian. I love plants and in today's video, we are gonna be doing our very first DIY. We're gonna make a couple moss poles for some of our house plants. Why do we need a moss pole for certain plants? Well, some of them typically like to climb up to their neighboring trees out in the wild, trying to reach out for light. So these are what the type of plants we call climbing plants. Plants like your pothos, your Monstera deliciosa, your philodendrons, they can definitely benefit a lot from having a moss pole near them, especially your Monstera deliciosa if you wanna prevent it from growing wild and out and taking up a lot of room and you want to grow straight up definitely attach a moss ball to it and train that vine to climb up it looks beautiful that way and you guys can see here with my golden pothos I actually repotted this about a month and a half ago and I knew I wanted to install a moss ball because I didn't want this one trailing down I'm actually trying to train this guy to climb up and since I've done that I noticed that the newer leaves are a lot bigger than the previous one it's growing a lot faster and there's a lot more variegation on it so climbing plants can really benefit from having a moss ball attached them and we're definitely gonna make one for this rapid though for a tetrasparma you guys can see here growing so fast and he's already trying to topple over so he definitely needs that additional support in addition you guys will also notice that the new leaves are a lot smaller than the previous one and they don't have as much split so I know this guy is desperately asking for a moss pole to climb up so that is what we're gonna do today we're gonna make a couple of them you know historically I've always just bought them offline but then you know I figured you know let me go ahead and make them because they're fairly easy to make and anyone can do them as long as you have the right material Materials. So the materials you're gonna use for this moss pole that I actually just found at my local garden center are You're gonna need some wood stakes and I have two sizes here This is four feet long and this one's two feet So it really depends on how big you want your moss pole to be and the plant you're gonna have it on For the rapid though for a tetris farmer because this guy's a fast grower And I know it won't be long before he's reaching the ceiling So I'm definitely going to use the four feet one uh, to make our moss pole and maybe for this one We might make it for our philodendron gigas, which is still fairly small right now But I know eventually he's going to need a uh, a moss pole as well. Now you don't necessarily have to use like wooden material as your uh, main structure or your pole. You guys can use like maybe bamboo material or even those QVC pipes that you get at your hardware store. Uh, but more importantly, what you're gonna definitely need is more of the screening or uh, chicken wires to really hold down the moss. I actually got this uh, chicken wire made out of plastic and mesh and it's a lot more flexible and easy to work with than like a metal type of chicken wire. Uh, also quite durable and it won't rest because it's not made of metal, right? So this is definitely something that you you absolutely need and again you don't have to use the wooden pole you can use any type of structure pole uh, that will work well you're obviously going to need some moss and I got these from my local garden center and what you want to do with these types of moss is you actually want to soak them for at least about 15 to 20 minutes in water and then obviously drain that water out and then you can use it so and lastly what you guys are gonna need is a way to kind of close the chicken wire together so normally I would use maybe like a fishing line here but unfortunately I don't have any I couldn't find any at the hardware store so I'm gonna be using some twine and we're definitely going to probably cut this and then seal the ends by uh, using hot glue. All right, so those are all the materials we're going to need to make our moss pole. And then from there, we're going to repot the raffido for a tetrasparma, also known as a mini monstera, and then attach the moss pole. Let's go. All right, so the first thing we want to do is determine how much chicken wire we're going to use. And uh, obviously, we want to make sure it's enough to wrap around this pole, but also keeping in mind that there's going to be a layer of a moss that's going to be on all four sides. And in terms of the thickness I want my moss to be, I think for this one, I just want it to be around a quarter inch to half an inch so keeping that in mind I'm gonna allow this chicken wire to kind of wrap around completely once around this pole without a moss and then from there go another half so that way it gives me an idea on kind of where to cut and how much chicken wire we're gonna use not only for the pole but also enough for some space for the moss so it looks like I'm gonna cut right here there's about one two three four five six seven eight nine yep perfect right here so now you guys will notice I'm actually going to do this in two parts rather than making one long uh, chicken wire because I only got the small table to work with and it's a little bit easier to obviously do this in two parts than one whole big piece. So let's go ahead and finish cutting this and then uh, we'll lay the moss and start tying these together. All right, so what we want to do is start putting a layer of wet moss on top of this chicken wire as evenly as possible. So uh, as I mentioned, I think I want about a quarter inch to about half an inch thick of the moss that we're going to use. So that looks good there. And you know, obviously this is going to be pretty easy. You know, if you kind of just think about when you close this together and you put that pole and you kind of tie it and next thing you know, you're done. Man, my rapid dough for a Tetris Parma is going to be so happy that he's going to have a moss pole here. So let's go ahead and finish this off.
Mm. All right, guys. So now we have our layer of wet moss on top of this chicken wire, and I like the thickness of it. Obviously, you want to try and make it as even as possible, but I think this is good. So now what I want to do is uh, make sure that this is lined up from the top. And like I said, it's only going to be halfway because we're only doing this in two parts. And I just want to see if there's room uh, to close it. Yeah, this is perfect, okay. So what we wanna do is uh, start tying these two loops together. Again, I'm using uh, some twine here instead of a fish line that I, I would prefer to use. And then uh, we'll start closing this up uh, pretty shortly. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll probably start here at the top and then kind of you know spread it out a bit instead of closing each uh, loop together. That way uh, we can at least have this guy held in place as we're tying the rest of the uh, loops together here. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right guys, so now that we've done the first half, we're gonna flip this to the other side and let's uh, do the bottom half now. So uh, obviously this is gonna be a little bit longer. So I wanna do is uh, trim the ends here. Uh, enough room for obviously the steak to go into the uh, container of when we're gonna repot this uh, raffido for our Tetris Parma. So I'm gonna cut just about there and leaving maybe no good, you know, four inches of uh, space where we're not gonna have any moss on it. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and put a layer of our moss. All right guys, so now that we have our layer of moss, so what we wanna do is place this guy in the middle again, uh, line up the ends here so that way this is covered, and then we'll uh, tie the both ends, the middle, and then we'll work our way throughout the entire uh, chicken wire here. So I think what I want to do to make sure that these knots do not get unraveled is I want to just glue gun the knot because I am using twine. As I mentioned, normally I would like to use more of a fishing line uh, just to ensure that that knot is a lot more secure. But for now, let's go ahead and do this and then we'll cut the uh, ends there. Ta-da! Here you guys have it. This is our four foot moss pole. It is gonna be massive, but you know what? Because this Rapido for a Tetris Parma is such a fast grower. Like literally, I got this maybe a couple months ago. It's two exercise now. Uh, I know it won't be long before he climbs up here and we'll probably need to attach another one or build him like an eight foot one. So for now, we're gonna move him from this, I think six inch container to an eight inch container. And the soil we're going to use is, um, I'm actually realizing that as I move up my plants from like a four inch to a six inch to an eight inch, my soil mix that I typically go to, which is, you know, 50% uh, cacti soil, 40% potting mix or 50-50 and a handful of perlite isn't enough anymore. I actually got to do like a third of perlite, a third of cacti soil and a third of potting mix, um, especially because it's a little bigger pot, right? So you definitely want to make sure there's a lot of drainage uh, in this container. So that is a soil mix. So I'm going to top this uh, container up. We're going to remove this guy from um, it's all soil and container and then we'll repot them we'll attach the moss pole and then we'll tie this guy to the moss pole so let's go ahead and do that all right guys so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, fill this guy up to about maybe two-thirds of soil and then let's place the plant and then we'll figure out where this moss pole kind of goes i definitely want this plant to like face towards the pole so this is going to be the back and uh, this is going to be the front and then that way uh, we can get these vines to kind of trail up so i'm just going to place a plant here just to see where that is and then we'll stick this moss pole uh, right about really really close to the vine okay so i think i like this placement right here now I guess the question is, is this moss pole or is this pot going to be deep enough to kind of hold the weight of it? Uh, I'm pretty sure it should be okay. If not, we'll probably need another container, but let's go ahead and top this up with soil and uh, let's see where we end up here. All right guys, so we moved this up to a 10 inch container and because it's a 10 inch container, I actually added extra perlite and extra pumice even in there just to make sure it's well drainage. And uh, this should definitely be deep enough to kind of hold this moss pole down. Uh, so again, we wanna make sure that the vines for this one is facing towards the moss pole. So this is gonna be the front, this is gonna be the back. 
So I like the height there, and then let's put this guy up here again. Uh, so normally, I like to make sure that the vines are gonna be close to this moss pole. I'm gonna actually turn this around like this, so that way those knots aren't showing. Okay, I like this placement, so let's go ahead and start topping this up with our soil mix. All right guys, so now that we have our moss pole secured, what you wanna do is uh, you know, put the vine uh, close to your moss pole, and that way you wanna make sure that you, know, you tie this together, and as this thing grows, it'll continue to kind of just you know, attach to the moss pole by itself. But what we're gonna use is this like Velcro garden tape that I found at, obviously at my local garden center. Very, very handy, very, very useful. And uh, this is great if you wanna try and you know, control kind of the, the way your plants are growing in terms of the direction if you want to keep them more closer in if they're getting kind of uh, out of hand but uh, yeah so I'm just gonna put these two like that and then tie this velcro and that's it look at that that is easy so as this thing grows it's uh, gonna attach itself and actually going to tie a bit of the top so that way it knows hey you can now climb up and you can therefore grow bigger and uh, taller and a lot stronger. Ta-da! Here you guys have it. Here's our super tall moss pole for the Raphidophora tetrasparma. And it might be a little too big for now, but again, this thing's gonna go super fast, so it won't be long before uh, he's definitely uh, reaching the top there. But I think what I wanna do is add some rocks and stones around the base of this moss pole, uh, just to uh, add additional security on it, just to make sure it doesn't like fall and rip the vines off the roots. So I do just wanna uh, be a little bit more careful because this is pretty tall and uh, quite heavy. So until this thing's kind of planted in and uh, you know, uh, well settled and uh, I think that's what we'll do but uh, pretty easy making your own moss pole like I said moss pole is pretty expensive if you buy them online uh, but they are a lot more convenient you know this does take time but it's kind of fun you No, know, I had fun doing this so now that I got the equipment to make them I'm definitely gonna make a lot more because I know my Thai constellation monstera can definitely benefit from it as well as my philodendron uh, melanocrysum will need a new one and uh, the gigas as well but uh, yeah pretty easy let me know if you guys are gonna make your own moss pole now or if you have made one in the past what kind of materials have you used uh, that work well for you guys but other than that hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, stay safe and we'll see you guys in the next one peace